I'm Sam Bloomfield. I play quarterback for the Manchester Titans adult contact team, and this is my player profile. Uh, I'd played rugby for many years, and uh, my friend's brother was playing in a national final uh, for Bristol uh, and he asked me one weekend if I wanted to go down and watch it. I didn't really have any idea about what it was other than the stereotypes from films but I thought it'd be a good day out. So I went down to go and watch it um, and I was immediately hooked and knew I needed to find a team near me. So I, uh, I started at the Chorley Buccaneers in um, 2002. I played flag football for two or three seasons um, and I was fortunate enough to get selected for the England squad um, when I was playing flag. Then I moved up to the junior contact team and played there for two years. Um, when I was 18, moved up to the Lancashire Wolverines Colts and uh, we were fortunate enough in my second year there, 2009, to go on an undefeated regular season. Um, right. Undefeated regular season, um, where we didn't concede any points in the regular season. We only scored one touchdown in the playoffs until we got to the finals and we lost to Farnham. After that year, I um, was uh, lucky enough to be selected for the under-19s GB team as a tight end. Played there, we went to Poland. Um, and then the year afterwards, I moved up to the Lancashire Wolverines for the adults team from 2010 to 2016. Um, and I played maybe three, three years as a, a linebacker and then eventually made the transition to receiver. Uh, and in that time, I played some backup quarterback. Um, in 2017, for various reasons, um, I decided to move over to Manchester, drop down to Division 1 from the Premiership, eventually got promoted, or the same year that I moved there, sorry, got promoted to the, to the Premiership. And then we had two years of, of being the second team in the North, going down to, to London and playing them. Uh, and then this year, we finished first in the North and, and then won the National Championship. Um, I played for Manchester because I decided I wanted to go to a club and help shape the culture of that club to be what I thought that a, a good club should be run like and, and that the coaches should you know, be like and got to the point where the players had bought in and it just felt like it was um, a fantastic place to grow and develop and to a attract people there. Um, you know, it's obviously an, an awesome city, but you really, everything feels different in Manchester. Even when I'm just walking around in Manchester city centre, like you feel this strange sense of pride that I can't really explain, but it, it just feels awesome to be there. And it's just such character in the city and on the team. It's just an awesome place with an awesome culture. And, and I, I just love it forever, Manchester. I'm going to veto the national final because obviously that is, you, you know, you're going to have a hard time beating that. But I'll go with the semi final uh, in 2017 against the Leicester Falcons at their home ground. Um, it was our first year at Manchester. We weren't really sure at the start of the year kind of what team we were and how far we were going to go. Um, and then as the year went on, we started to realise that we could really do something, we could really go somewhere. Um, and then we played that, that game against Leicester in the semi-final for the, for the promotion. It was just an awesome game of football. It was back and forth, it was intense. Um, we just performed really well against a really good team. Uh, and it was sort of a last, it wasn't last minute, but it was, it was coming down to the wire. And we managed to, to get that win uh, and it was just awesome. We I think we spent like an hour and a half on the pitch afterwards just talking and 
it was great to know that no matter what happened in the final against the Olympians, um, we'd earned our spot in the Premiership for the following year. Ever is, is really tough because 20 years worth of opponents is a tough list to go through. I'll give an honourable mention to Arthur from Tamworth. Um, in the first game against us this year in 2022, um, you know, he was, a, he was a pain and he put pressure on. He didn't manage to get to me, fortunately, much to his, much to his unhappiness. However, in the second game, um, switched things up a little bit. He, he played a little bit of a different position, a little bit of a different style, um, and he just had an awesome game. And he was really, really tough to deal with. But I, I will go with Te uh, Taylor Brown. Um, he played for, for that Leicester Falcons team that I talked about, and then when they got promoted to the Premiership, he played safety and everywhere else for them as well. Um, just a guy who came over to the UK and was unfathomably good. Uh, we just avoided him constantly all game. I think the right at the end of the Bristol semi-final game, um, it wasn't my best performance. The team rallied around me and let me know that they still had confidence in me going into that fourth quarter and into the final minutes of the game. Unfortunately, you know, I managed to perform well enough in that final few minutes to make something happen. Unfortunately, Max Gracie Ainsco. Um, the freak that he is, you know, was able to take a, uh, a ball where I probably should have been sacked, but take take a ball really deep downfield. And I think there was just a lot of emotion after that game because I thought that I'd cost us the game through a couple of mistakes, managed to rake it back a little bit, and then the defence does what they do. Um, and yeah, just after that game, it just felt like the culmination of 20 years of hard work in that one moment. It's awesome. Um, this has been a really long journey and, and not necessarily in a bitter way, but I've always been snubbed from GB for whatever reason. When I played linebacker, you know, I wasn't really, I wasn't a fantastic linebacker, I was okay. When I played receiver, I was a bit too big, a bit too slow. And then when I played quarterback, I, I sidearm the ball and my technique's all wrong. So for one reason or another, there was never a chance for me at GB. Fortunately, the coaches saw that I had some potential, saw that I could, you know, I wasn't limited necessarily by the way that I throw or anything like that. It just feels like an awesome program to be part of, like the culture there. Everybody is constantly working hard, like, we're in the middle of the regular season and guys know how important their season is, but you're still trying working as hard as you can, like there's no easing off. But also it doesn't feel like uh, oh there's there's my a member there's like a player from a rival team, like I, I'm not gonna really associate with them or I don't wanna talk to them very much. Like it doesn't feel that way, it doesn't feel like us and them. It feels when you're there, you're part of the G B program and ultimately that's what you want. <laughs> my favourite teammate oh screw it Adam Bamba Chris Winrow <laughs> Alex Cooper he he's always chatting in my ear oh I got the sack I did this I did that just give it a rest yeah it's hard to go against saying the guys who have PhDs aren't the smartest. So guys like Scott Higgins and guys like Owen Smith. Um, but on the field smarts, probably Sam Fossey. Let me think about positions. Oh, Sam Pearson. That guy is that guy's nickname is 100% Pearson because he is absolutely a practice hero. He hits hard, you know, he plays hard, he's good at football, but how on earth is that guy at Loughborough? Like, their standards have dropped, clearly. He can be really annoying, honestly, and 
He's my favourite person to wind up. However, the vibes are undoubtable. Undoubtable? You can't doubt the vibes. It's DK. Could be a shout for Alex Cooper again, but unfortunately for him, George Slade, um, he has no interest in being friends with anybody or communicating with anybody. Um, I'm surprised I saw any reaction to him when he got the pick six against London in the final. Believe it or not, if you watch that clip back, he's screaming on the way back, but he's probably doing it in a really monotone, careless voice. Okay, so honourable shout out, honourable mention to Scott Higgins, because the guy is just bloody lovely. However, um, every single time after practice, midway through a practice, after a game, midway through a game, Josh Dowling will tell me how fantastic I am and how great I'm doing. And he's so sincere about it. And I know that he does it with other people as well. And he's like, you were just great today. And I really enjoy watching you play. And I'm just like, you so lovely, Josh. If coach's pet means somebody who requires constant praise and gratification, then it's Chris Winrow. Because that guy, he doesn't eat. Honestly, he doesn't eat. He fasts because he gets all of his nutrients from compliments from coaches, but he has to go out and hunt and gather them. He is paleolithic man only for compliments. The hardest teammate, like, I'm not scared to fight him, but he has an aura around him that he probably is carrying a weapon. So Sam Fossey. Like, there's a chance that he's got a weapon. That's a tough one, because, oh my gosh, everybody works pretty hard. The, okay, so Max Gracie Ainsco, like, he wants to stay behind after practice, and he's like, can we work on, like, this particular route? And he'll happily stay there. We, we've done it before. Um, I think it was a touchdown against Merseyside. Like, we, we spent, like, an extra 20, 30 minutes um like working on this literally this just this one route it's not even complex it's just this one route making sure that we were completely in sync with this one route and then just for the fact that he like he wants to put in so much time and effort into that kind of stuff just those small little things like max gracie ainsco works real hard the classic answer is scott higgins um he plays wide receiver for us he's constantly an unsung hero um you throw a ball at him and he will catch it if i if he doesn't catch it it's probably because i've i've given him a bad ball pumpkin uh, i reckon that guy probably doesn't hydrate he probably just drinks beer uh, DK because he is relentlessly loud it never stops like I don't know if he has like a quiet mode Chris Peel has no regard for his brain health and so there's a good chance that he would um, he would try to take my life um, kneeling down when a player's injured I know that it's a sign of respect but I don't think it's disrespectful to continue on as you are or have a conversation with the coaches, you know, um, when somebody's injured. If, if it's a serious injury, go over to the sideline, you know, be respectful, of course, but I'm not sure where, when or why taking a knee started happening. In fact, I might just try and get all the Prem North teams next year to not do it and see if we can make an agreement. Pride. Um, obsessive. Uh, eccentric. A paleontologist. Well, actually, it was a vet first, um, but then I realised you had to potentially put down animals, and so I switched to other dead animals um, until I realised that it probably wasn't a good career choice for me or anybody. Fresh's house or Seven Sins. 
just because they've got shuttle, Shuffleboard and they've got Beer Pong and they've got Hooch. North starts like maybe like Stoke or like Staffordshire or my geography is quite poor, but it's it's roughly around that middle. Like you have the Midlands and then you have the North. Like don't call the Midlands the North. Scottish people are cringing everywhere. Okay, so bag in water. Stir, wait, settle, bag out, sugar, milk. So this is a play we had against uh, Tamworth at their place. Um, it wasn't a very good game for us. Tamworth game planned quite well and we didn't execute very well either. But this was a highlight from that game. Um, so this concept is a rollout. We're backed up in our own end zone here. So um, usually we try and give ourselves a little bit of room with running the ball. Um, but we uh, just saw an opportunity for this play to work. Um, we'd scouted for it and we, we knew that if as long as we executed this play fine, the protection fine, we could get this done. So I suppose initially on the rollout, we've got um, Owens playing right tackle here uh, and the defensive end uh, widens quite a bit, which is fine because um, we have Joe Nick, uh, the running back, comes up to that inside gap um, and protects that. So I've got a nice wall. I can roll out, set up and then read um, the coverage. So we have uh, a speed out from the slot receiver um, and uh, a go from the wide out. Now, the wide out and the slot receiver, they're stacked one on top of the other. And this just creates a little bit of a different look for the defenders. Um, and it can give us the opportunity to exploit some, um, exploit on some certain um, concepts that we run, depending on what coverage they're running. So we had um, we had the go route, and essentially what what we're looking for is to see um, how the corner reacts. So the cornerback is here, and um, based on what he does, I get my read. So it's important to know that a lot of the time with the concepts we're running, I'm not looking at my players. I'm reading the defenders, and what they do will allow me then to switch and flick over to the player that I want to target. So we're watching the corner here. Um, and if he drops back uh, really aggressively, then I'll throw the speed out underneath and we'll, uh, you know, giving ourselves a little bit of room there. If he sits low or isn't playing off quite as, um, if he isn't uh, trying to take away the deep quite as, uh, as much, then we'll have an opportunity to throw uh, the go route. So the defender, you can see he um, he doesn't quite play this so desperately trying to get deep. What he's doing is he's potentially trying to cheat that speed out and also be there for run support. So we end up getting the go route uh, really wide open. The safety stays down on the on the speed out as well. And Max Gracie Ainsco um, just runs a, a great route. He slow plays it and then he blasts off um, on the go, puts his foot in the ground, uh, and we just get an enormous um, an enormous touchdown there. So this play um, is a play that we set up. And we spend all day against pretty much all the teams that we face, um, peppering the underneath with screens um, to our receivers and hitch routes and things that are, um, you know, little, nice little gains, um, three, four, five yards um, a pop. So teams become used to this and, and start to get concerned about those underneath plays because obviously as more you chip away, um, you know, you're just constantly chipping away driving downfield. So what we do here is we have a play action here um, and we'll have the outside receiver will run a fake screen. 
and the slot receiver will pretend to block and his job is to pretend to block until the defender bites down on the screen. Now, obviously this looks identical to when we actually run a screen at this point. Um, this is everything that we do when we run a screen. Our slot receiver slow plays it, our outside receiver comes back inside. We'll give a little tiny pump there. And because of what the receiver's doing and because of the little pump and the defender's, um, you know, turned inside, so he's got his eyes on me as well. He can see that little pump. The second he starts to come down and shift here, our slot receiver, Ben Martin, recognises it. And he then takes off. And obviously we've practised this a lot, so our timing's quite good on it. Um, and it's just one of the prettier plays we ran this season. Um, just Ben and Dan on the outside there doing a great job of selling it. Ben doing a great job of, uh, you know, firing off at the exact right moment and then just um, good spot on the ball, great protection from the O-line. I think Lucas uh, wipes a guy out on this play. Um, yeah, that's, that's classic Lucas. Um, so yeah, just a, a a really nice um, kind of finesse play. So this is a play from the national final against London. Um, we had great protection on this rollout pass. Um, Owen does a good job of uh, controlling that the end there. Tom's there on the outside uh, to pick up any potential threats. So I've got a nice clear window here. And um, what I'm essentially doing on this play is I'm reading the cornerback, um, similar to um, the, my first play. Um, and whatever that cornerback does, that will uh, let me know which is the right read. So as you can see, the cornerback here, um, he is down in press and he, get, he does get an okay press on, on Max. Um, he is seemingly potentially in two minds about what to do and so that even that slight little hesitation uh gives us a nice little um opportunity here to get over the top of him so at the point where adam bamba fresh is just coming up to level with the cornerback here that, that lets me know that my receiver will eventually beat the corner for speed. The corner would have to have incredible recovery speed at this point for me to, uh, to if as long as I give, you know, Fresh uh, a good enough ball flow right over the top, um, he'd have to have awesome recovery speed in order, in order to get into a position to actually defend this ball. Um, so yeah, Fresh just rounds that corner, sells it quite well, stays, stays in bounds um, and we just get a nice float over the top. Um, the safety um, just kind of is indecisive about what he's going to do. Um, I think he sees Max coming over uh, and he imagines that Max is going to continue to run up the seam. Um, but fortunately, on this particular play, Max is sitting down. He'll belly outside away from the apex defender who started to cover him, which actually gets Max open as well. Um, so Max is an option on this. But um, yeah, just because of the indecisiveness of the cornerback, the speed of Fresh on the outside, we just managed to get over the top, uh, happy with the ball placement. And uh, yeah, just an awesome touchdown to put us... Um, put us three scores ahead. Oh my God. <laughs> no, that, I know I understand what it's like for the NFL players when they get asked these questions, they're like, uh. 